quote unquote meritocracy. And I would use to go back to the football example, and nobody needs to know anything about football because I'll explain it in a second. I, I remember when Arsene Wenger first came into English football, he became the Arsenal manager. Arsenal were known for playing. So was he was he, was was he from as well? Sorry, um, Arsene Wenger is French. Okay, okay. Sorry. and when he first came to 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 the English Premier League back in the nineties, um, Arsenal were known for playing quite dour football. Okay, for being a bit of a hoof, a bit of a hoof hoof and run team. Okay, uh, and they had like thugs at the back, like Steve Bold and Martin Keown and uh, Tony Adams, uh, people like this. Um, and when uh, Wenger came in, he had this policy of bringing in like largely unknown foreigners, uh, not just French players, but like, you know, players from Africa, or just like a smorgasbord of people from, from around the world. He had a very internationalist transfer policy, let's put it that way. Um, but he was also known for playing in a very aesthetically pleasing style of football, uh, the beautiful game or whatever. Uh, Arsenal... Um, Arsenal, like for the football, pu it was the football purist's choice. So these two things, the credit, the the meritocracy, and the the transcendence or the aesthetics, if you want to put it that way, in this case went together. And when Arsenal started having success, all of the other teams in the in the Premier League basically had no choice but to kind of start copying and just I know. So now Man Manchester United and Liverpool and all the other teams also start started bringing in you know, uh, the equivalence of the Patrick Vieiras and the, um, you know, whoever else they had playing, Robert Perez or whoever else they had playing from, for them at that time. Um, so it was almost like now this standard is set, due to the principles of competition, it's almost impossible for all the other teams not to go along with it. Like, let's just pretend Manchester United had, had decided, right, actually, sod all this, we're going we're gonna to stick with you know, just pure Brit British players um, through thick and thin, then, you know, they probably would have got left behind because all the other team, like all the other teams were bringing in stars from around the world. And do uh, you understand the point? So I'm not sure that yeah. the... Well, the, the, well, the, what you were showing there is that number one, there's a rapture effect on uh, meritoc meritocracies where um, you basically have had uh, so someone who has brought in these things and then uh, again, like you said, because of competition, is forcing everyone else to change their ways to to match um, to match things. You know, they're having to subvert themselves just to keep up with the competition. Now, if those guys never, if if Wenger wasn't in play, would we have what we have now, which is um, teams with who seem to me just purely filled with international stars that from places I've never heard of before. You know, that's 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 who are. Uh, our great national teams are just bunches of foreigners who have no connection to the land whatsoever. It, it, it's, it, you, yeah, you, 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 like, you, you, you're right. They they have more ability. Yeah. They were able to defeat the the local teams, but at what cost? The soul of the nation was lost during that process. Also, I just want to go back to the thing about yeah, the sorry. you know the be the beautiful game, and um, again, I don't see meritocracy as an on or off switch you just have something that's either more meritocratic or less and he was obviously making uh compromises on technical ability for quote tran tran those transcendent qualities he's had to close he's had to be less open about who he's selected um to, to do that i'm not necessarily arguing for um a complete reduction of uh like like toning it down to zero but what I'm saying is to 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 readdress the total openness that we have in our in our selections for jobs and elites in today's society. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking like the the, the kind of um, you know North FC uh, football loving guy. Like, I mean, I'm just trying to imagine how you might like you might say something like, "Well, would you have denied? Would you have denied people Pharaoh?" Uh, Didier Drogba or Thierry Henry or um, you know Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, yes, just, and, just... and 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 here's here's the thing. Here's the, here's the problem. Everyone who does that is just desperate to win. You know, you would literally sell sell your mother uh, <laughs> into slavery to make your football team win. You know, and this this is why I feel like football has been a key uh, angle of subversion because people have gotten so het up about 
winning football that they would literally compromise everything about who they are and their nation just to win a game. Okay. I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not saying these things because I, I necessarily want them to be the case. I'm just saying that the logic of it seems irresistible to me. Is that once one person or country or company or team starts doing this, it's it's all going to go that way if they have superior results in a system that's competition driven. Well, that's what Hulul would refer to as the, I think the the totalitarian nature of technique. That once you develop a better technique, once you have developed the new one best way, then everyone else has to copy it. 